Today is my first day of final year. Ah! I'm gonna get my game face on. It's gonna be okay. Number one job for this morning. Exchanging this old badge for this one. It says final year. It says final year. Time to head in. Wish me luck. What the hell is this? I put in my first catheter today. Yes! <laughs> That's not really champagne, <laughs> but that is how I feel. I've got a couple of things I want to show you. Number one, say hello to my little friend. Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine is pocket sized ish, but worth it to carry around. It contains everything you need to know as a final year on the ward. Another thing is this little beauty, the folder clipboard. Keeps all of my papers neatly protected against bodily fluids and allows me to write at the same time. Absolute dream. So this is the view of the hospital from our kitchen window. Look at that sky. Myself and some of the other students attached to surgery at the moment have come up with this pretty amazing idea. So we're all attached to different teams, we're all learning different things and the amount that you can learn in a day is obviously determined by who you're with, who can teach you and how much spare time they've got. So since that can sometimes be limited, we've decided to all meet up with each other and just share some of the knowledge we've gathered. Love it. Oh my gosh, I literally cannot believe what's happening. Last week I uploaded my notes for sale on my website and since then I've had thousands and thousands of pages ordered. Ah! My phone has been going off non-stop. This is the stuff I'm talking about. It's just pages of my notes. And I cannot believe it. Thank you so much. Ah! Thank you! Autumn is here everybody. Just look at these leaves. Just started my psychiatry attachment. Got my warm layers, got my pit alarm. God knows what's gonna happen. Woo! Um, today's task, I want to take a full history and do a mental state exam. I need to read about that. This here is the hospital, and here is my lovely accommodation block. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour. So this is my room right at the end, C70. Quite basic, but I was very lucky that my boyfriend's mum and sister <laughs> lent me some blankets, so I'm looking very patriotic. Cute little desk, little storage cupboard, bit of wine, don't look at that, very naughty. More or less everything you need, I can wash and sleep in the same room. Slightly broken curtains, never mind. So this is what it's like to live in hospital accommodation. Just finished my psychiatry attachment. Four weeks of um, completely different to medicine, completely different to surgery, completely different to everything really, as you'd expect. We're not looking at organs and blood results. Yeah, we're talking about what's going on in here. The major things I would say are really useful are to have a, a really good grounding in the basic principles and bullet points of the psychiatric history and although it's, it's so much more useful when you can make it into a conversation um, because it's vital to build a rapport with the patient and gain their trust so that they tell you everything that's going on in here um, it's also really useful to have a list of the different things you need to go through because all of them can give you um, really important indicators of what might be going on in terms of the diagnosis um, Another really important thing to have set in your mind is the mental state exam. And that one really is just a simple list of the different components involved, which again gives you a really good insight into what might be the problem. I'm on my A&E placement at the moment, which in other countries is referred to as ED, emergency department. And I spent the afternoon today on RESAS, 
as in resuscitation, which is all very exciting. And I was with one doctor who was amazing and taught me some really amazing tips. So I want to share one of them with you because I love a mnemonic and this one is absolutely banging. It's um, a mnemonic for remembering the sepsis six, which is something we talk about in the UK. Six vital things that you need to do as soon as a patient comes in with query sepsis. So the mnemonic is, bear with me, OBAFLU, O-B-A-F-L-U. And it's so great because it also tells you the order of things to do. So patient comes in, we think they might have sepsis. Number one, O, O, o oxygen. Give this patient oxygen. Um, straight away because the, the worry is that the blood isn't reaching their tissues. Um, if they're septic, they're likely to be hypovolemic because of peripheral vasodilation. And so really important, get some oxygen on them straight away. Um, o, B, blood cultures. We need to take the blood cultures to find out what bug might have got into the blood and start to cause this um, chaos. <laughs> so O, B, a antibiotics that's what comes next so blood cultures before antibiotics but um, even before you get the results back from the blood cultures stick some serious hardcore antibiotics on this patient um, O B A F fluids like I mentioned if this person's septic their blood vessels are dilated all of the blood is leaking from their capillaries into their peripheral tissues and they are not going to have enough blood in their central system to reach their organs and so we need to give them fluids to keep up that central pressure and perfuse the brain, the lungs, the heart. Uh, okay, O, B, A, F, L. Lactate. Lactic acid is a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. If there's high lactate, that indicates that perhaps blood isn't reaching these peripheral tissues and they're having to respire anaerobically as a result, increasing the lactate. So that's a measure of severity. O, B, A, F, L, U. Urine output. Get a catheter in the patient straight away, that's going to be a, a really good indicator. So, there you have it, overflow!